Hi, and welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome, and I hope you enjoy the content that I'm going to be showing today. And if you're a returning subscriber, how are you doing? Thank you for coming back and supporting me. I really appreciate it. Today, we're going to be making The Peacekeeper by Annie. I, I didn't bring mine. I have several of these hanging around my room on like command hooks. So we all sometimes have UFO projects, projects that we start and then we somehow don't finish, right? This, this little nugget will help you um, keep things organized. Like, oh, I'm going to make the unnecessary clutch wallet. I'm going to put all my um, materials into this bag. Or I'm going to do some paper, um, paper hand piecing quilting. Like whatever your project is, it helps it get together. I put them in for like bags that I have orders from, from Monday through Friday, so I can just grab them and go. So like I spend a solid day putting all the hardware, fabrics, interfacing, and just sticking everything in its just perspective bags, so I can just grab the bag and go. So I was really just excited to get um, the go to make this bag because I thought this is something that we can use all year round. It's a great gift. Um, if there's like sewing swaps it's a great thing to give to another sewist or a great thing to give to your kids hanging on the door like this is ted's bag and <laughs> all his legos and all his math blocks or whatever can go into it it could be, has many different functions and you can change it up we're going to follow exactly what the pattern says today and we're going to be doing a little bit of different things we're going to do some sewing here some cutting um and sewing over there and coming back to sew and iron. So it, it does go through a little bit fast, faster than uh, you think. Um, so let's look at the items that you need. All right, first you're gonna need to pr print the download. I will put the link in um, the description box. It's a free download and uh, by Annie also has a fantastic tutorial that goes along with this for free too. We're going to need a 13 by 13, 13 and a half by 13 and a half square. So you see mine is cut by trying into a triangle. Basically, this is a 13 and a half inch block square and I cut it in the middle and we're going to be making some bias binding, but we're not doing that just yet. So we'll put it to the side. We're going to need a 24 inch zipper. You can um, use zipper by the yard. Or you can use um, YKK zippers. Uh, they're a 4.5 versus the 5. Either way is good. I'm going to be using this nice little snowflake um, as my only hardware in the bag. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't think of that at first. We're going to need our mesh. And this is by Annie 2. And mesh has an interesting an interesting uh, property. When it cut correctly, there's not a lot of stretch going up and down. There should be tons of stretch going side by side. We are going to need a four and a half by 12 inch cotton handle that is interface. I use Shape Flex 101 on this and you fold it into it itself and you're gonna create a nice handle that we're gonna stitch down. You're going to need a pattern. Um, there's not a pattern number on this, is there? <laughs> no, you're going to need a front border, which this is what I'm going to use for the front border. And the front border needs to be interfaced with Shape Flex 101 or Sew Fuse or whatever you have available. And then a lining piece of fabric that does not need to be interfaced. Um, a ruler, of course. And we need two 13... 13 by 18 pieces. We're going to have, I'm sorry, I'm removing the pens because I was trying to keep everything together. So I'm using this very, this really cute, um, I forgot the name of the designer. This is a licensed fabric. I will forget the name. It's a, it's a designer that's out in from Japan. And this is like all the Disney princesses, not even just the princesses because they have like Alice in Wonderland and all that stuff um, and they're like cookies they're sugar cookies or shortbread cookies and I have this is the last of this fabric and I wanted to put it in a special project so you need an, um, an exterior and a lining that is 13 by 8 you need a um, any soft and stable that's 13 by 8 and then you have this so we're gonna start off with um, 
the lining. Um, the lining is not going to be completely visible. It will have the mesh over it and then the border. So something light and fun. Or you can make your, the like this, this is what I would have, this is what I have as my lining. Just really pretty blue fabric with little, um, they're like stars. Like, you know the stars that you made as a kid that you just drew? Like, <laughs> they look like that to me, like sprinkles, I guess. And this is my exterior. So for the lining fabric, I'm going to take, and I'm going to make sure all my pieces are ironed. And then you can iron over, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, I'm like focusing. You can iron over the, um, by Annie Soft and Stable. It is a polyester blend. So just iron it on a low heat. But the, the good thing about the formula of this, um, this particular fabric, uh, by Annie is that it is meant to kind of adhere to your fabric. So I'm taking some quilt pens and I'm spreading out, making sure all the bulk is nice and even as I possibly can. And I'm putting some pins in on the side to hold it while we piece. Well, so this could stay still. So when we flip it, we can add the lining. I'm now confused. Like I'm like, do I want the blue side to be Okay, yeah, I want the blue. So I'm going to just put these pins in before I pin in place everything you want. You can use machine um, quilt basting like uh, Silky has one. I have like, when I spray glue, it just, it messes up my sinuses dramatically. And I'm just like, it's not worth it for me. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be doing some quilting on here and I'm just trying to keep everything um, as straight as possible. And we're just gonna do some basic lines, but this is, you can have fun with this. There's so many designers out there that have embroidery files that you, that are quilting where you can make like a Disney motif or, um, you know, different things you can do. You can do free motion quilting. There's so many things you can do. I am going to take this Air Duo and I'm going to draw a line and this line will just disappear with water or on its own you can do this with chalk as well I just can't find my gray chalk pen Go figure. So we're just going to draw a line that connects that a pin that wants to actually work. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. I, I find these really cool pins that are heat erasable and then they never want to work. So I'm going to draw one inch lines. You can do any kind of pattern you want. Take your time. This is the the most long part is quilting, and this is could be this could be really a joy for some, and for others is like, oh my god, I don't want to quilt. You don't have to quilt if you don't want to. It just gives the bag a little bit of fluffiness and cuteness and all things right. I'm telling you, these 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 uh, heat erasable markers for me are just super not loyal. <laughs> and I started in the center since this is 18. We would we would go in at um, nine being the center mark. We're going to quilt. 
as soon as my marker doesn't die on me. I'm going to draw that line again. This is a heat erasable one. This, I had this pen for a while, so I knew it was going to die. I'd just been holding on to it. I got it from this um, quilt shop over by my house, and I was like, it's a highlighter. And they're like, no, it's a heat erasable. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm going to be using 40 weight thread from um, Wawak, and it's a Mon. You can use coordinating thread, or you can use something that... Um, you know, as contrast, it's your choice. You can have the top and bobbin threads be different colors, do a variant thread. The possibilities are endless. So for your stitch length, um, you have, you have to go off of what your machine goes best, but I, for the first, for quilting, just to help with it, doing a, a 3.5 stitch or five, well, absolutely fine and remember there's no back stitches so just have fun think of this as practicing your top stitching too if you're like hey I need to work on my top stitching this there's no better project because a quilt you're gonna see the lowest lines I'm just knocking everything down. And I'm not back stitching because we're going to cut this down to the size that we need. I'm just getting, letting it get squishy and bringing it over to the the line that I made faintly. opportunity to use fabric that you typically don't use all the time because you're like I don't want to you know go into my stash I don't want to go into my stash this is if you have fabric that you're hoarding for something special what what thing is better than special than for you to create a bag that you can use to put all your project pieces in with your favorite fabric Back stitching because I totally went off. All right, and I'm just doing it. The more you quilt with um, my Annie, the more puffy it gets. It condenses. This is her formula. It's very just domestic machine friendly. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think she sews with a Bernina, and like she has, she's all about. <laughs> I feel like she's the original binding person for bags. Um, and her, she has really great binding methods because they're very similar to quilt methods. And we'll just quilting. I don't want to sew over it. All right. So then what we're going to do right here is I'm going to stop and I'm going to meet you over at the cutting table where I'm going to finish quilting this other half and then I'll bring it over to the quilting table and hit it with the iron so that you can see all the lines disappear and what we do next. 
Okay, so we have our quilted piece. Once we have that all done, I ironed out all the um, pen marks, the erasable pens. Now, if you live in a colder climate, just be more cognizant. Sometimes these pen marks do come back when it goes below 32 degrees. I have had that experience. <laughs> We're now going to cut out a, um, out of this quilt blocks, we're going to trim, cut out a 11 by 16. Let's see. And I'm putting the eight in the center of the, where I made the, the nine inch to center it out. Cause and remember I told you originally I had made this, the center line. I'm going back and I'm putting the eight in the center line moving it up to 11. Now this ruler is a, um, a 16 and a half by 16 and a half. So I'm going to have to cut off a little bit on that. I'm just lining everything up, making sure everything is nice and even before I cut. And I'm going to cut. Have your fingers splay, have a nice, you know, have a good blade on you, something that's sharp. And then we're just going to remove this. Do not catch all that. And then I'm just going to bring this over and put the eight in the middle again. And make sure it's lined up to a 16. We'll remove this tiny bit from the side. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to take, there's a two and a half inch um, circle piece that is on, um, that you can print for free on the pattern. It's a PDF. I'm going to take my round circle. I have, um, Creative Grids has like some really cool circle patterns and I'm just going to draw a blue line and this is not going to be heat erasable because you will never see it. Um, and because what we're going to do is we're going to take this back to the sewing machine and sew one eighth of an inch all the way around to still in the ends. And I'm going to trim, I'm going to sew one eighth of an inch into this blue line and then cut around where I just sewed. Making sure I'm lining the curved part to the both edges and nothing's like shifting. All right, so we have that. We're gonna bring that over to the work table. What you're gonna do now is I showed you in the beginning that this was a 13 inch square. Then when I cut a triangle, I cut triangles out of it and, it be, and I put two of the short ends together. So this now can become the bias tape. So I have two little dog ears that I need to cut down. And you take it to the iron and you press that seam open. Once that's done, we're, we are going to cut. If I can do this right. I swear I do this right. We're going to cut our bias binding um, to um, two and one fourth of an inch. Two and one fourth of an inch. Sorry. The message is coming at the same time I'm talking. So I have it into a nice little square. You open it from the cool rectangle area and then you're going to fold it in on each other if you don't have a large cut area. If you have a large cut area, you can just cut across. Um, we're going to go two and one fourth of an inch. So measure two right here. I have it on my grid and then I'm just going to go two and one fourth of an inch. Move it back to a line again. There's two inches, fourth, and 
then we're going to connect all of these. Oh, sorry. My hair is all in the way. I apologize. Two inches down to adding that one fourth of an inch. And the last one, but not the least. I don't move anything. I'm bringing it to the two inch line and then adding the one fourth of an inch from the ruler. And my hair again. Okay, next time I'm gonna wear my hair in a bun. So we have these strips and we are going to put them, sew them together. And they're gonna have little dog ears and there'll be one nice long piece of bias tape. So we're gonna take all this to the machine and we're gonna work on that from there. We're almost done, believe it or not. Okay, so we are back. We um, machine based the area that we're going to be cutting around. And it's important because if you don't, then you have these nice little flaps and it's not cute. It will get stuck. So both the front and the back look good. We're now going to take the handle that we prepared. I had the handle. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> Just playing. I have it all along. Okay. So we're going to take this handle. We're going to fold it in half. You can um, put some clips if you wish to keep everything together. And we're going to sew one eighth of an inch down each side. Go around all four sides just to encase everything. But you're not going to see the raw parts of the handle. Okay, cut the threads. We have our handle. And now we're going to start prepping the zipper. Now the zipper, remember, is 24 inches. And out of habit, I, I always try to find the center to make sure everything like lines up okay. And we're going to grab my Dritz pen and draw a white chalk line. On both sides and then I'm going to choose to quickly singe my ends this is this tape is from Waywack too it has like a nice um, structured feel I'm gonna put my zipper pull on I'm going to just bring it all the way to the left so that way I don't sew over it. The next we're going to take with a zipper pull towards the left we're going to take this I'm going to find my center. It's kind of hard to mark this so what I usually do is I fold it in half and then find my center area and start clipping. This wants to stretch, so use as many as clips as you want. Like this, it's, it really does start to stretch. All right, and we're going to sew this part down the mesh using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch well in the beginning and I'm sewing with the zipper down. If you don't feel comfortable with that, you can do it with why it's up. I'm just trying to prevent the stretching as much as possible. And I'm trying to make sure that the 
that the little um, top part of the mesh doesn't peek out. If it does, you can trim it down. But if I could prevent it, then that's all the better. It's going to stretch, but we will be trimming, trimming everything down. And then I'm just going to go over here in any area that I see, like, because I don't want that poking through when the zipper's trying to open and close or be visible on the outside of the bag. So I'm just trimming, carefully trimming above where we stitched. Take your time. It's better to be a little bit behind in time and getting things right than having to repair mistakes. You know, we all make mistakes. That's how we progress. But part of progression is knowing when to slow down and just enjoy the process. You're making yourself or a friend or a loved one or a coworker <laughs> um, a really nice gift. All right. So we are going to push this down. So now we want it to face, we want it to face up. We're gonna stitch this down using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Uh, matching thread helps tremendously. I'm using a contrasting thread so you guys can hopefully see my stitching. And this will help in close any raw edges as well. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to start sandwiching in our Piece. Now, right now you're like, hey, wait, 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 Shinova, we use an 18 inch. Everything's not lining up. Just try to match it as best as you possibly can. We, it will all work out. So I'm just going to flip this on the side, move all these little blue burrs, <laughs> and I'm going to sandwich in like we do with zippers. With a, the, where the front side is touching the mesh, the right sides are touching the mesh on both the lining and the front piece. Then I'm going to take some clips, and just slide it in so we can sew this down. Using a one fourth of an inch. Pins are really good here too. And if you have those magic pins that like in the line bag sells, you can sew through them. I really feel like that's magic because all my life I've been told don't sew through pens. So <laughs> I'm like, yes, someone saying it's okay. So you can bring this to your iron and iron both sides down. Um, if you're at your station, you're like, hey, I'm not gonna iron. You can finger press it down or if you have a seam roller, you can do that too. I'm just going to massage the fabric so it goes down into this natural position. And then I'm just going to put a couple clips at the end so that the lining doesn't try to creep up. It naturally wants to because it's lighter than the exterior because exterior has a Shape Flex 101. We have this beautiful piece and I'm going to top stitch this. using the eighth seam allowance.
Okay. And you know what would be really fun too is if you have a machine that has like a decorative stitch, that would be really cute accent feature there. If you're embroidering, also like a name here, like my, my daughter's name. I have two daughters, one's Faith, one's Hope. I can have Faith, Hope, and then my son's name is Kendall. It would be cute. That's like, it would be a really cute gift. So we are going to put these two together. Um, what I, what I do first is I, I go over this over with a one eighth of a stitch inch stitch so I can enclose all the, all the, um, it encases all the edges so that nothing's like pulling out, like nothing's flying around. And then I use my scissors and I go over that blue line that I drew earlier and cut out the curve. I find when I cut this curve out first, then when I place the other one, it's easy to navigate because the main pattern piece already is cut out. I'm still like questioning if whether or not this is going to be my lining or my, in, my exterior on the outside because I love that print. And if you're having um, directional print, just be cognizant. Like you don't want to have your handle like right here and all the, the prints, all the prints going in one direction, you know? So I'm going to lay this on top of it. And I'm going to find the centers to match to match up. I'm just going to do a snip. And I'm going to Oh, I have the center already on here. Ha ha. Yay, Nova. Okay. I'm just going to clip this. And I'm just going to go around all of this and clip it as best I can because I'm going to work from the back. I just want to make sure everything is going to fit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sew not where, where the zipper is, but right underneath the zipper right here and go all the way around all the way up until I go to the up point. Then I'm going to back stitch take it off and then flip it forward so I can um, make sure the zipper pulls within the seam. You can increase your stitch, stitch length because this is a base stitch. You're going to do it at one eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to back stitch, pull the thread out, trim the threads, and then I'm going to move the zipper hold onto my threads. going to trim everything real quickly. Let's see. Sorry, my tablet fell asleep. I'm reading the instructions from there. It's only a two page instructions. 
So I really, really like that. So everything is meant to be a little bit excess so that way you can get that, you know, perfect piece for your um, bag. All right. Grab that, toss that. This is already looking really, really spiffy. All right. So we're going to take, go to the back and we're going to measure in five inches in. make a mark on both sides. And then we're going to Make sure that our handles are not like crooked or anything. And we're just going to machine base this at one eighth of an inch. And I'm doing it inside the five inch mark. So I'm just going to do the back to stitch two to give it um, a little bit more stress like stability. It's going to be caught up in the, um, with the binding, so. Okay. Then we're gonna start working on the binding. To me, the, the, the most trickiest part of this bag is the binding, but Bayani explained it really well. Um, and also, if you've been quilting, you, you know what to do. So we're going to connect all of our Binding, binding, binding bias. Now, the way you want it to go is that you want you want the pieces to go directly like into one seam. Then you're going to flip it onto itself at a 90 degree to angle, and you're going to put a clip or two, and then you're going to sew this at a one fourth of an inch seam. I did not get that right. Hold on. Let me remove that. I am the I'm the first person when I mess up. I'm going to fix it fast. Like I'd rather catch a problem now and, and address it than have it to be a bigger issue later and not address it. You need to have it go. You need to have it where like you have little dog ears on each side that are about the same size. Right sides together, one fourth of an inch seam. And then when you open it up, you have now your binding bias connecting. So make sure you really get all the string then i'm going to finger press this open you can use a seam roller or your iron whatever you have that's convenient to you and then by any does not like ironing her um, bias binding so we are going to pin the wrong sides together every three inch three inches and we're not ironing because she makes a great point when you iron and then you're trying to bend and fold fabric you can get creases and wrinkles so by not ironing, you can get a smoother binding. So I'm every about every three inches, I'm taking some pins and I am pinning it together so that way it can go smoothly when we're putting this together. Okay. We're in the home stretch, I promise. So, this part is the part that is, to me, the most important. 
you need to find whatever center you want to make. So I'm going to make a white chalk mark right here. And just to help for purposes, I'm going to make, I'm trying to find a pen that's a, a different color than everything else I have. I'm going to take one of these pink pens and stick it in. This is going to be our center or wherever you want to have it. I usually always close my bindings at the end so it's not as noticeable. It's the same thing I do when I um, am making it for a bag. Wherever I start, I'm going to start probably two inches in. Two inches in and I want to have, I'm going to start two inches from each corner. But I want to make sure I have enough tape that goes extends above this mark. So I'm just going to start here at two inches in and I'm going to start and stop by my second row of stitching that which is exactly two inches. That's why I wanted to go up and down. So we're going to start in the corner. We're going to do raw edges to raw edges. And remove pens as you go. You're, you don't see any clipping because we're wrapping this binding around. We're going to do it at a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch to the beginning and at the end. And you can use a stiletto. It helps tremendously so you don't accidentally sew over your finger. <laughs> And as you, you're move, using more and more pens, um, just remove them and put them safely somewhere. Don't sew over your pens. Your machine is not meant for that or they're not the special needles. I was real. I did not understand her pen, penny method, and then it became a staple in a lot of projects I do. Sometimes I even do it with bags because, like, you get no wrinkles, no puckering, and it just—it's a really smooth transition. If you bind, if you bound a bag, you could bind this. Bind this. It's just like quilting, except we don't have any miter corners, so it's even easier. Now we're getting to that area that when we get to the two inches, we are going to get to that box, that area. We're going to back stitch and we're going to stop. All right. So. Our binding is two and a half, um, two and one fourth of an inch. So we need to um, make these little, the, this pen is our center. We need to make each part of the fabric go one and one eighth of an inch past, uh, past that mark. And then we're going to cut. I know it's scary, but the, this is our center pen. This is our center pen. And we're going to go one inch by one eighth. So one inch, one eighth, and I'm going to, I promise you when I need a pen, there's nothing there. We're going to go, um, we're going to make a mark and we're going to cut. So we're, we're cutting the excess that isn't part of the one and one eighth. So I'm going to move this to the side. I'm going to bring this over here to the center part and do the same thing. I'm going to measure on this side, one inch and one eighth. Bayani does this really cool method with um, two triangle rulers. I, I'm i just doing it the way I I think I, I was taught this way and I just, this pen broke too. Okay, Shinova, 
we got to work on your pen game. <laughs> we just, I'm trying to, the, I, I should have picked really dark fabric. That was completely my bad, but, <laughs> um, most of my, um, most of my library, library of fabrics are dark. So I'm going to cut it at one and one eighth. Now here's the part that gets a little where it can make you feel a little nervous. Okay. So we have this, we, we need these to merge. What we're going to do is we're going to put these right sides together. And this is the hardest part because this bag is going to fight you. And we're going to turn it at a 90 degree angle. When we, we, if we do it this way, you by all means, you could do it this way. And, um, you could do it this way, but you'll have a bulk. We're trying to not have that bulk. So we're going to put this together and we are going to sew from one side to another and so that we can cut off the excess. So what I like to do is I like to grab um, a couple of clips or pens, whatever works easiest for you. I'm going to grab me some pens and this is going to want to fight you. We, we need to sew these two together at that 90 degree angle. So we're going to go up this area and then we'll be able to cut this. And when we open it up, this part will be one. So from corner to corner, and it's going to be, we get weird. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna fight you. I'm trying to get this side to cooperate. I might have to stick a couple of pens in that because the thing is, is you're going against the bag. The bag is already taking shape, and it doesn't want you to alter it. And before you cut, <laughs> before you cut, always make sure it opens upright. If it doesn't, then you have, you can remove your stitches and try again. If my machine wants to act not batty. So I'm gonna remove these pens and see how when it opens up it's now one seam so i'm going to trim this down so remember we put together then we turned it to a 90 degrees so you did that cross line you finger press i should have this is not even one fourth of an inch it's like a little over one eighth you finger press that you fold it over and ta-da Seamless binding. Yay for us. We did it. <laughs> that is the hardest part of the bag. And then once, if you've made quilts before, then you're already a pro. You know what to do. You can do it where um, it overlaps on each other. I'm just doing it where it's seamless and it's not as much bulk. I'm using a 9014 needle. I don't know if I said that. I don't think I did. I'm really bad at that. You can use a denim needle if you need to, depending on the materials. I have this one that I'm going to make with Levi jeans. And then like it has its original pockets, like the clip ones. And so it could be extra storage stuff. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna bring this back to our machine. We're gonna go where we were last and we're gonna do some back stitching and finish this bad boy up. Trying to get all the threads now before we flip it. And I'm, as I'm turning this over, I'm just going to 
to the clips and um, if you see any wrinkles you can kind of just massage them out like unpin that area and then just massage it out because it's not because it's not iron there's no permanent creases in it You can do the same thing with a bag, so that way it's a nice clean finish, um, a nice clean finish in the bag. You're just tugging on the area, making sure you clip everything. Get all those blue straggler strings. Yesterday I was sewing with my girlfriends and I had like every color of the rainbow thread in my hair. My hair is like a magnet to thread. I wasn't joshing when I was saying that when I take a shower, sometimes I have clips coming out, pens, pencils. You'd be surprised with this this hair likes to do <laughs> and there's no right or wrong way of putting on your binding if you wanted to do this in the back and then have the nice fresh edge in the front you can do whatever makes you feel happy all right so there we go we're going to now stitch this down i am looking for my stiletto All right, one fourth of an inch. You're gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. Having threads that match help tremendously. <laughs> or if you're going for the contrast, you could do that as well. I'm all for contrasting. If you have a wrinkle, make sure it's above your stitched line and not below, or it'll show. Take your time, breathe, put the needle down if you need to reposition. the one fourth of an inch stitch line and that could be your guide to cover you know to cover up a little bit more pulling that that uh thread a little bit more taut so that way you can make sure that you cover up the previous row of the stitching have so many threads in this area. And you can move your zipper. Like my zipper's right underneath me. Just why the needle's down. Move it to the other side so it could be easier. So Oh, 
right. So we have a really pretty um, project pack. I could put what my tools, notions, rulers, threads, any kind of kit. And then we have like the, a beautiful lining and a, a beautiful um, exterior back too. This is one of my favorite. Um, this is one of my, hold on, let's see. Somehow you moved, I moved, hold on. Bear with me for a second. You're like, I see only half of you, Shinova. What's going on? So <laughs> there we go. This is like one of my favorite um, prints. Uh, I will get the name. I got it like off of Etsy like four years ago and then I can never find it. And I wanted to use it for a bag, but then I'm like, I don't want to use it and to give it to someone else. I wanted something that I can use every single day. And these project bags are perfect because now um, me and my friends, we're going to be making an Erica Buller bag together. So I can put all the stuff with the Erica Buller bag into this bag and go. Um, once you master making your first one, you can try a different sizing because it's, there's, there's no rhymes or, you know, reason you can try different corners. You can do sharp square quarters and do a miter quarters. You can have some fun with it. I, in my head, I was thinking about what if I made each corner like a heart shape. I don't know. I, I think of odd things or having like a, a blunt, like triangle or a rectangle shape or whatever. You can have fun with these. But the point of this is, is that one, you're making a project that, that holds your projects. Ah, <laughs> two, it doesn't take that long to make. So if you're trying to get your sojo back in from the new year's new year's, this is a project for you. Three, if you're part of some kind of sewing exchange, whoever gets this is going to absolutely love it because they get to take the best of um, fabrics and something that they can use in their sewing room or on their day-to-day -day basis. If you're like, hey, I don't want to use this for your sewing room, let's say you have kids or you are um, a grandparent or you're a godparent or your uncle, your uncle or aunt, a really cool way to like maybe use their stuff. Here's some ideas. Take some of their like baby clothes as a jersey and make a mini quilt in the back and the front and then like applique their name in there. And then, oh, they have a nice bag that they can hang in their room with all of their stuff that really did belong to them. It would be a good shower gift. If you're friends with someone and your friend gave you a baby blanket for your child, maybe if you still have it, take that baby blanket and make it into a project bag so you can give it to another, you know, friend or family member. There's so many endless opportunities to do something with this bag. That's why Bayani is one of my favorite, one of literally one of my favorite pattern designers and her foam. I will not cheat on her foam with anyone else. Her foam is superior. It's her formula is amazing. The more you sew on it, the let the the denser it gets, and it's super domestic friendly. But she, with all of her projects, you're incorporating some quilting and some binding. She has like a very Vera Bradley feel to her. And you can use so many things around your house to make this bag. Another thing would be cool is like when people use wrappers to make um, pouches. What if you took like your favorite candy wrappers and made it a quilt pattern in the back? Like, again, endless opportunities. Another thing you can do, if you're like, hey, I don't want the mesh, but why not use some of that clear, um, clear vinyl that you bought? All of us have some in the stash because we're making wallets and boxy bags and all this stuff that what if you put clear in here and now it could be a kit for a kid on the go um and all the markers and stuff can be in there there's again endless opportunities you could possibly split this in half and have two zippers going down the side with the mesh in here so it could be two different compartments i can keep going i'm full of ideas if you don't know this if you haven't been to my channel i am full of ideas <laughs> that's why i love sewing it it's endless possibilities but we learned today round corners. We did some very simple, minute quilting. Normally I would be going at 60 degrees and making like all this stuff, but I wanted to show you how fast it is. If you can do it, if you don't even want to quilt, you can make this. It doesn't have to be quilted. Just base that around at one eighth of an inch. And if you don't want to use the paper pattern piece, that's a two inch circle. Creative grids has a two inch circle, or you can use any ruler that has a round edge. Heck, if you don't have a ruler, use a cup, flip that bad boy over and trace it. <laughs> you're good. That's, that's it. You learn how to make your own bias binding, which I always like doing because it makes the bag look a little bit more sleek and more professional. And then 
it's not as tedious as um, other binding methods because you don't iron in her binding. It's penny every three inches, three or four inches, and you're good to go. And the hardest part to me is connecting right sides together, 90 degree angle. So you're golden. <laughs> so um, that is it. This is the um, my tutorial. I'm really excited. This is my second like tutorial for um, the, my main channel in a year. And I'm so grateful that by Annie and her team allowed me to give me the go to make this. I have made her um, easy does it pouch. I'll link it in this video. She just is inspired me. There's four of the bags I really, really want to make. And there's one that I've already got to go to, but if there's something by Annie that you want me to sew, put it down in the comments. I'll definitely reach out to them. Again, you need to download the pattern on by Annie's website. I will have that in the description box and you will watch her video too. I always like watching videos of other people to see how we differ. Um, to kind of learn different tips and tricks for someone else. That's the whole beauty of sewing. Everyone has different ways of doing things. Um, it's our art. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, like, subscribe, hit that notification button. If you're like, hey, Shinova, I really want to do something special for you because you're like amazing in your hair. I'm like, I, I get the hair. <laughs> just plain, just like, you can um, do their support through Kofi and, and it helps me buy new equipment for here. Like I'm going to probably start working on more lights because I work in a basement area. So I have to light this up for you guys to see in here. And then with the winter sun, there is one window down here. And when it's brilliantly cold outside, the sun comes in and it, it's blinding. <laughs> so, um, you, I'll put all the information for that in my down below. Um, I'll put the link to where you can get by Annie's the pattern and it's free. And she even has the download for the circle template, which is free. So until the next time I see you, I hope everyone stays safe, make happy memories and happy sewing. Bye.